Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do this video today on retirement savings and a little bit of what's going on in the world when it comes to Canadians and Americans and where each one stands as far as retirement security and how secure are the different pension plans that each individual country has and also what kind of savings um, Americans and Canadians have achieved on their own um, through things like RRSPs and 401ks in the United States and also when you think of the different avenues that Canadians have to get um, for the total of, of their retirement income. Um, in Canada, we have the CPP, the Canada Pension Plan, but we also have the old age security uh, benefit. And then if you're a low income senior, you also can get the guaranteed income supplement. Now in the US of A, you, um, you solely get um, your old age security. And one of the things that most people um, have a little bit of a misconception about is the Canada Pension Plan, the CPP. I've seen lots of people post on social media saying that they're concerned that one day the uh, CPP is going to run out of money. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, Despite Canada being the 38th largest country by population, Canada has the third largest share of pension wealth. Um, Canada had eight of the world's 100 biggest pension funds in 2021, including the Canada Pension Plan, the CPP. And from all the different uh, studies that have been done, the CPP at this point, according to all the actuaries, is funded um, uh, for the next 75 years with no questions asked. And the, the CPP isn't associated with the Canadian government in any way, shape, or form. And it doesn't have to be uh, legislated like it does in the U.S., where old age security can be uh, basically removed by the, uh, by the government if um, Senate, the Senate and the House actually would vote on it. So in Canada, the CPP is a separate organization and um, that money cannot be touched in any way, shape or form. So we're pretty secure as far as that goes. Now, in the U.S., currently, there is a lot of talk. Um, well, hold on. Well, before we go to the U.S., my dog Sadie is ringing the bell, and I apologize for that. Stop, Sadie. You're not going out right now. So the second benefit and the third benefit that Canadians can receive, one of them is the old age security, which goes to most seniors unless you have an extremely high income. And then we have the Guaranteed Income Supplement, which if you are a low-income uh, senior, then you're, um, you might be uh, able to get that benefit. And like I said before, in the U.S., they just have the Social Security benefit, which is a, a combination of all the, different, uh, all the different benefits. Now, there has been talk as of recent that the Social Security Fund is going to run out of money um, by 2033 and that uh, recipients might be uh, only um, available to get a benefit of uh, about 77 percent and um, they haven't really uh, they haven't really come up with any kind of a scenario to increase the fund and they haven't uh, done any um, on either party, the Republicans or the, uh, the um, Democrats haven't come up with a way 
to secure up that, uh, that fund. Now, the other issue that they have down in the U.S. of A. is the fact that uh, a lot of um, municipal and state pension funds are uh, sadly um, uh, underfunded as well. So they definitely don't have as secure of a, a pension system um, as we do in Canada. And when you think about that, that can be uh, that can be a scary thing um, if you've paid into your taxes all your life and you're expecting to get a certain amount of money from the government um, for your retirement. So if we look here um, at another uh, spot at what the average um, person has saved for their uh, retirement, the... Uh, the, the number in, uh, in the U.S. is $333,940. And that would be um, something that they've saved uh, above and beyond um, what they're hoping to get from their, from their government uh, pension. And in Canada, the average uh, retirement savings by age in Canada, if we look here, 65 and older, government pension funds and private pension funds, like if you were a teacher or something like that, is about $500,000. And then employer-sponsored pensions, so that's where you get RRSP matching, et cetera, through your employer is almost 400,000. And then RRSPs and retirement, um, uh, the, the RIFs and the LIRAs, which the RIFs and the LIRAs are locked in retirement funds that um, can't be touched until you stop working or you reach 65. And then TFSAs, 61,300. So that's a pretty large sum of money that Canadians um, seem to have at age 65. Now, I know a lot of people that don't have anywhere near that. Um, and I know a lot of people that don't have um, next to nothing saved uh, for retirement in Canada. So I don't know exactly where um, stats can, and that's who that supposedly uh, the inf information was sourced from. I don't know um, where they actually get um, their uh, their information from because there are a lot of seniors that are hurting and a lot of seniors that uh, are hardly uh, able to pay rent and buy food in in Canada at the moment as well as down in the in the states so the long and the and the short of all this uh, information is basically you know in Canada, you're pretty well secure as far as uh, knowing that, you know, the government is going to be able to provide the uh, benefits that you were promised. And in the U.S., not so much at this point unless the, uh, the U.S. government um, can get a bipartisan uh, um, law put into place to beef up their social security so people aren't going to end up with lower benefits or no benefits at all. And it looks like the Canadians are, are uh, better equipped as far as their own personal savings um, for um, retirement as well. So if you are somebody that is close to retirement, one of the things that that um, I was on a Facebook group this morning and somebody had um, had asked a question about uh, her and her husband were getting ready to retire and they weren't quite sure what to do with RSPs or TFSAs or savings in their house. And, you know, they were, they were quite confused on what they were going to do in a year or two when they turned 65. And I find that really scary because... When you need to start planning for retirement is when you're 
you know, when you're in your 20s and your 30s, um, because how you set up all these different retirement uh, savings uh, vehicles can have a, a, a very large, um, um, you know, effect on how much money you're going to have in retirement, how much taxes you're going to pay. All of those things need to be thought of way before um, it, it becomes time to retire. And um, unfortunately, I think a lot of folks don't, uh, don't start early and end up paying a lot more taxes and, and not having as much income because they haven't spread their money out among um, different retirement investment vehicles and savings vehicles. Like if you, you know, were able to get a lot of money into your TFSA in Canada and you can draw money out of that after you turn 65 and on, you're going to be in a far better position tax-wise than somebody who didn't put any money into a TFSA and just put all their money into an RRSP. Um, all the money that comes out of that RRSP or eventually a, a, um, a RIF is all taxable income. So you, you need to plan early. You need to start um, when you're very young. And by doing that, you're going to be able to, uh, to get a lot more money uh, through um, the government systems as well as from your own savings. So as always, thanks for watching. And um, I would love to, um, if you would leave me some comments on um, ideas that you have to do with uh, retirement and um, how you think uh, these numbers stack up. If you think that, uh, you know, people have a lot more money than this says or, or less money, um, if you have any suggestions on ways people can do things better, that would be great. I love providing uh, lots of different information to the folks who subscribe to my channel. And as, uh, as well, if you aren't subscribed to my channel at this point, please do so. It helps out my channel a lot. And I greatly appreciate it. And you'll get notified um, when I put out a new video um, pretty well right away. And hit that notification button. And the most important thing, hit that like button. That uh, makes YouTube uh, send more folks to my videos. And with all the different comments I've got on my videos that I've done over the years, um, uh, I seem to be helping uh, a lot of people. So I greatly appreciate it. As always, have a wonderful day, and uh, we'll see you next on the, on the next video. Thanks a lot. Cheers.